Good afternoon and welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Nigel D'Souza and with me is Horma as well. And at the bottom of your screen, we have the big news that's coming in there. S&P on India. They've revised the outlook to positive. The ratings affirmed and they revised the outlook to positive from stable. Remember, the markets were under pressure early in the trading session, took support closer around the 22,700 odd mark. And now post that news flow, we're on the way to around 22,800 odd. This is some bit of good news that's come in there, uh, Hormuz, so from an India perspective. And the mid cap index, by the way, has moved into the green. So that's telling you that, in fact, portfolios may not get hit as much because yesterday, those, you know, many of the stocks were under pressure. But today, they have pulled back on us. There's a bit of a recovery on the index as well. The S&P has affirmed the rating. The rating remains the same, but the yes. outlook has been revised to positive. And that is a big news that is coming in there as of now. And we'll take a look at all of We'll address this in greater detail as the show goes by. But the Nifty has seen a slight recovery from the lows of the day. But as Nigel was highlighting, the mid-cap index has turned positive from the lows of the day. But as we move on, let's first take a look at the headlines that we are tracking on the show this afternoon. The stocks are trading under pressure with financials and reality being the big drags, even as metals and pharma see some bit of green. Broader markets are faring better. The mid-cap index has just turned positive. MTAR Tech reports a weak set of numbers. The beta falls 60% while the margins contract by over 1,100 basis points. The company also misses their FI24 revenue and margin guidance. They have also gone ahead and trimmed their FI25 guidance. Campus Activewear shares have surged over 16% and have crossed their IPO price today after four months after their fourth quarter results. The profit has surged over 40%, EBITDA is up 13%. Kotak is bullish of the stock as the management is confident of reverting to double-digit growth soon. Suslaws Energy re receives an order from Aditya Birla Group to develop a 550 megawatt wind power project. Novama initiates coverage on the stock with a buy rating. They expect the order book to scale. New highs the lending revenue visibility for the next two years. And in a large block deal that took place in PNB Housing, 2.7% equity worth over 500 crores changed hands. And private equity players, Asia Opportunities, Mauritius and General Atlantic Singapore funds are the likely sellers in this transaction. Well, uh, let's get straight to, to our mid-cap mover segment. Then Mangalam is joining in to run us through all those mid-cap stocks that are moving around. Mangalam, take it away. Well, the mid-caps are all moving around and how we have uh, a few more gainers and now they've been increasing even as the mid-cap index has now moved into the green as we speak. It's been a relative outperformer in the sense that it did not fall as much as the frontline indices all through today's trading session. And now we're seeing signs of life spring back on that index as well. So let's talk about a bunch of these movers. Mazigon Doc reports its numbers today. Ahead of that, that stock is up 6%. Hoodco continues to rally. You know, positive commentary coming in from brokerages and the management itself. Suzlon Energy won an order and that's uh, led the stock to move higher. Uh, you know, not that it needed a reason. It's been moving higher for the last uh, many months itself. Cochin Shipyard is the other one which is doing well too. Speaking about, uh, you know, Cochin Shipyard, we've also had a bunch of these uh, defense-focused stocks like Bharat Dynamics, Bharat, Bharat Defense, uh, uh, you know, all of them moving 6 to 7% odd. And GE Shipping is the other one, which is a gainer. The rail theme continues to move forward. And we've seen a big, big spike in the names like Titagar Rail, Texmaco Rail, all of them up anywhere between 5 to 7%. Most of the gains have come by just in the last 15 minutes or so. Jubilant Foodworks is the other one, which continues to rally up nearly 11% this week and uh, topping it with gains of almost 4% as well. But for a lot of the gainers, there are some stocks which are losing as well. So Monte Carlo reported a weak set of numbers. Management commentary was also not particularly enthusing. And as a result of which, that stock down in nearly double digits. Hindware Home as well, reacting to its numbers. Hatson Agro saw a big up move in yesterday's trading session. Turns out uh, that, you know, there is profit taking on that one down about 6% after the big up move yesterday. PNB Housing Finance, there was a large trade. That stock too is down about 6%. Ujjivan Small Finance Bank down about 5%. And we're also seeing cuts on names like ICICI Pro and Jay Prakash Associates. So a bunch of these stocks moving on either side, some on the up, a lot on the low. Okay, all right, Manglam, thanks a lot for that. Well, uh, Hormuz, you know, earlier this morning, I said that the one result that I'll be looking forward to is Cummins. You know, because the stock is at a fresh uh, 52 week high, actually. And the street is a little bit optimistic on some of these counters. You know, just pull up the intraday chart out there. I'll be waiting by for the numbers. But for the time being, the stock has seen a big recovery from the low point of the day. Yesterday as well, the price action told you that the street is bracing for a positive set of numbers. We'll have to see what's the delivery. But for the time being, there's a massive recovery 
from the low point of the day. So come into the stock, keep in your radar. A couple of sessions ago, there was big delivery-based buying on this one. In fact, the delivery-based buying two days ago was the highest we've seen all the way since September. So keep an eye out on that counter. But let's get straight to our first management. We have Uflex uh, that's in focus. The numbers, well, they were a little bit disappointing on a year-on-year -year basis as well as on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. To understand what's the outlook from year on, we have Mr. Rajesh Bhatia, the group president of finance and accounts and the CFO of the company who joins in. Hi, Mr. Bhatia. It's been a while since we chatted and good to have you on the show. Well, let's Thank run you. through a couple of basic details then. For the past year, what was the volume growth, if you could tell us? And for the coming year, given that you have some facilities that have come on stream, what's the guidance uh, in terms of volume growth? I think the volume growth for the year as a whole was about 2% only. Uh, but, you know, the initial quarters were a were bit, uh, you know, low. So on a Q4, we have about a 7% uh, volume growth, which is very healthy and which has also given us uh, uh, a much higher, about a 7% increase in the operational EBITDA to about 455 crores, so which is about 1,800-odd crores annualized number, uh, which is going to be much better than the FY24 for the year as a whole. And, uh, you know, we've been... Uh, again impacted by the currency losses in Nigeria and Egypt, which are, which are very substantial this year. And uh, other than that, I think, uh, you know, the flexible packaging, the aseptic packaging, the holographic and other substrates like chemicals, every business is doing very exceedingly well. Uh, it's mm. only the uh, films business that, is, that has uh, seen a lower volumes as well as uh, a lower margin. Uh, but, you know, I think in the last few days, we've seen about a 10% increase in the prices in the BOPEC films in India, I think, which augurs well for the industry. And so this is, uh, this is without any in corresponding increase in the raw material or other costs. So I think uh, in the quarters to come as well as, uh, you know, this should augur well. Mr. Bhatia, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining in. This 10% price hike that you spoke of, is that at an industry level or is that at a company level? If it has an industry level, would you as a company look to increase prices as well? So, uh, it's at an industry level, first of all. So, everybody is looking to, uh, has done its bit in terms of the price increase because the prices had become uh, far more unsustainable and uh, I think even at the current level, people will make uh, people, people uh, may not make losses, uh, but you know, uh, still, uh, I think the prices are way below, you know, what uh, what the normal uh, what the normal levels should be. So All right, see. you know, before yeah, yeah. All right, Mr. Bhatia, before we get to the margin outlook, give us the spreads since the prices have increased on. Uh, BOPP, I think you said, or BOPET. Uh, first, tell us, what is your mix currently in terms of revenues from BOP as well as BOPET? And what are the updated spreads at current reckoning? So we have about 30% uh, out of the film's business, about 30% is the BOPP. Okay. And what are the spreads, sir? We, are, we, we lost uh, you on so that. I can give you a blended margin only. I think currently we are at about 11% overall EBITDA margin for the packaging films business. But what explains the decline in the margins overall, Mr. Bhatia? It was down to around 10% from 12% uh, in FY23. That do you see that uh, normalizing back to around 12 or 13% in FY25? So if I see the last two quarters, including this quarter, uh, you know, the operating profits margins are about 13%. So they've been in the range of 12 and a half to 13%. I think with this 10% increase and also, uh, you know, some of the investments that have come on steam in the current finance, will come in the current financial year. I think we'll look at at least, uh, you know, uh, over the current year, uh, we should be easily looking at a 2,000 crore plus EBITDA levels in FY25. And that seems quite doable given the Q4 uh, uh, run rate and Q3 run rate as well. So mm. I think we'll be very positive uh, on the volumes. Aseptic packaging, we've done the highest ever uh, production okay. and 
this year we were constrained for the capacity so we couldn't have done much uh, better uh, against the capacity of 7 billion packs we actually sold about 7.4 billion packs in fy24 and our exports are also resounding we we do export uh, about 40 percent of the aseptic packaging uh, from india to to global markets all right just to get that number correct sir on the aseptic business it is 7.4 billion packs yeah is what we sold in fy24 we have okay. a we have a commission capacity of 7 billion packs uh, at okay. our and we actually uh, did a slightly above that Okay, and uh, what does it mean in terms of revenues for the aseptic uh, business? The revenue would be close to about 1300 odd crores. 1300 crores, all right. And that's at optimal levels, right? Yeah, that's the optimal level for the current capacity, but as we are okay. debottling, and that is currently on. So mm. before the next season begins, the capacity will go up from 7 to 12 billion packs. Okay, all right. Uh, and just to reconfirm, sir, you know, just wanted to uh, uh, confirm that that EBITDA you're guiding for around 2,000 crores in the coming fiscal, and that compares yes. with around 1,400 crores, right? Uh, so that compares with around 1,500-odd crores in the current year because I think we are looking at the operational EBITDA and mm. excluding the impact of all these currency uh, deviations and all that. So that okay. is current year is about 1577 crores in FY24 and okay. surely we are looking at a 2000 crore plus number in FY25. So that's broadly a 25% increase in the absolute EBITDA number uh, on your calculations. Yeah. And uh, what about the debt number? The interest cost still remains reasonably high. So if you could give us what is an updated debt number, I recall you telling us that maybe at some point of time you'll start paring down the debt. What's the net debt number? Uh, so the debt is about 5,500 odd crores. And uh, as on 31st of March, we've added about 1,200 crores in the in, in the fiscal FY24 as we commissioned our Panipat uh, pet chips plant, as we commissioned some of our PCR uh, and the CPT facilities in Russia. So uh, the debt level is now 5,000. Uh, 500 odd crores the net debt level and we have uh, a scheduled repayment of about 1000 crores in FY25. We also had a similar sort of a repayment in FY24 as well which we paid and we have a similar level of uh, repayment coming in FY25 as well. One final question, Mr. Bhatia. You spoke about Nigeria and Egypt. How much does that as a geography contribute to your overall top line? Because you've mentioned that you're extremely sensitive to the currency devaluation there. What are the what are the steps that you're taking to offset that pressure that is coming in from these geographies? I think uh, they are more or less, you know, the losses because of because we have to convert from their respective currencies to reporting currency first to dollar and then to reporting currency in India. Uh, but if we look at their standalone, uh, you know, the, the local level uh, currencies, I think uh, we continue to be uh, in an extremely good position in both the, both the jurisdictions. Egypt, mm -hmm. outside of India, Egypt is today our largest, uh, you know, sort of uh, setup outside of India. So they have uh, a substantial... Uh, capacity and we are expanding there as well in terms of uh, setting up a uh, uh, pet chips raisin facility. So both India and Egypt pet chips raisin facility will actually help us to almost complete uh, more than 80% backward integration in terms of our raw material requirements for the BOPET films, uh, mm -hmm. which has been, uh, which will, I think, uh, is, is a long term good for the company as we, as I said earlier, also we lost uh, in the last few years quite a bit of a margin on the raw material mm. purchases when the markets were, were at their high. So I think that will provide more stability to the earnings. Uh, so the only thing that you will be left to is the market prices of the packaging films. At least on a raw material side, you will have a much more certainty as we go forward in FY25 and beyond. Appreciate you joining in, Mr. Bhatia. Good chat after a while. You're sounding quite optimistic about the future. The past year wasn't that great, but you're saying on a like-to-like -like basis, the EBITDA number, the absolute number will pop up.
by close to around 25%. And you're seeing signs of pricing improving on ground as well. For the time being, the stock is down close to around 4% because the past quarter's numbers were a little bit disappointing and the year on the whole was quite challenging. We we'll slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll be joined by Mr. Agarwal, the Managing Director of Insecticides India. Stay with us. Back with us on Midcap Radar, on to the other corporate conversation that is Insecticides India. The company reported a net profit of over 7 crores and an EBITDA gain of over 8 crores in the quarter. We have Rajesh Agarwal, the managing director of the company, joining us now to discuss the quarter gone by. Mr. Agarwal, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining in. What explains the drop in margins this quarter, Mr. Agarwal? The margins are down year on year on a sequential basis. For the full year also, the margins are lower. Are you seeing this trend uh, stabilizing as you head into FY25? What's your call on the margins now? Uh, I would say that uh, uh, in last year, if we look at the year as, as a whole, then we have made a recovery and we have uh, posted a pad margin of roughly 100 crore plus, which means that uh, uh, the strategy is working out because uh, the time was very, very challenging when the prices, uh, we saw falling prices after COVID. And there was high price inventory, which was troubling in the previous year. We had the impact in 23, 24 also. There was some partial impact, which had, which was very much there. But now we see that whatever inventory is there in the system is the low price inventory and uh, the uh, monsoon uh, is looking good. So overall, I believe that uh, we should make a recovery in our EBITDA margins. Uh, we are moving towards a double-digit margin on a beta level. And you will see that slowly this growth will come in the pad margins also uh, reasonably. And our star products, which are particularly the Maharatna products, uh, they will also grow with time because this was the strategy which we played in 23-24. Uh, and uh, it played out well, I would say, because our uh, uh, this is, uh, products have grown by almost 27%, the uh, Maharatna products. And from 51%, the entire sale of B2C has uh, increased to 59% for these products in particular. And with the new launches also coming in in this year, and the last year launches also going ahead, I believe that uh, this will support the company in improving the margins. So do you stick to your uh, FY25 revenue growth guidance of being in double digits as well? You had mentioned that at the end of Q3. Do you stick to that as well? Yeah, definitely. We see our, our double digit growth possibility in this year, at least in the B2C segment. But in the international business and IBD also, I presume a similar type of growth. All right, uh, sir, if you could help us out with uh, what is the split between B2B and B2C? Uh, generally, our B2C is uh, uh, roughly about 65%, uh, roughly. Oh, got it. And, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So B2C is 65% and out of that, uh, you know, the contribution coming in from Maratna is uh, approximately 59% of that 65%. Yes. yes. 59 of that 65%. And you see this number move up from 59% to what levels in FY25 and FY26? There will be a continuous improvement, actually. So we okay. target 65% in next two years. So it. slowly it will keep on improving. And at the same time, the absolute number will show more increase. Like in the previous year from 51, it has improved to 59. But overall mm. growth is 27%. Got it. What about exports, sir? Uh, exports are uh, a small proportion of your business, I think 5%. But there yes. are various challenges out there. So yeah. if you could tell us, how do you see exports shaping up in the coming year? Because all the challenges which are for any general industry, we also face those challenges in the international business. But now we are banging more registrations and we believe that this year we should see our entry into the advanced markets of South America and also in Europe. So, which will support us. And we also see the business increasing in ASEAN countries as well as Middle East and Africa. So, we have the target of uh, improving on our export segment also at least 40 to 50 percent from here, where we are. And uh, definitely, it will co keep on growing for us. So, at the moment, yes, the contribution from export is very, very low. But you will see definite increase in this percentage. So, from 5 percent of the total mix, you think in the next three years it will double to 10% of the mix? That is by FY 26, 27? Yes, that assumption can be uh, taken, yes. Okay. And what is the profitability difference between exports and domestic? Is exports better? Is domestic better? Or there's no difference in margins? 
Uh, broadly similar actually because it depends on the product means what type of tab we have and what type of products are going so yes in future we see the export happening or increasing from the new generation products so yes there will be some advantage what about product launches mr agarwal you had mentioned earlier that you plan to launch around 7 to 8 in fy25 are these plans on track and if you can spread uh, give a timeline on as to by which quarter do you plan to launch these products Yes, in the first quarter itself, there will be launch of three to four products, and then the further uh, products will come in the second quarter because there are some products which are pertaining to the Ravi season or the winter season also. So these uh, launches are in line, and their products will come. In the previous fiscal also, we have launched about eight products, and which have contributed roughly fifty crores. But if I go down the line to uh, from uh, FY twenty, then these products have contributed more than five hundred crores. to our turnover which means that people are appreciating the market is appreciating our new product range and uh, these new product range whatever is coming is coming in our maharatna segments uh, with higher profitability and we are trying to build a premium business for our company so that the profitability can be built not uh, just the volumes or the numbers actually all right mr agarwal pleasure as always thanks a lot for joining in wish you good luck for fy25 and for your new product launches as well there was the management there of insecticides india sharing their outlook for fy25 and a timeline on the new product launches the stock though is down 5% in today's trading session time for a short break we'll get you more on the markets and specific stocks on the other side stay tuned Welcome back. Well, just highlighting a couple of stocks. Nava Limited. Well, their Zambian arm has got the go-ahead to add 300 megawatt of capacity at a cost of around 400 million dollars. So explains why that stock, from the low point of the day, has seen a fairly good recovery. And the other one is RCF. You know, the start of this week I highlighted that the delivery volumes were there were rather large. So that stock as well, from the day's low, has seen a bit of a spike up. But Campus Activewear. That's the stock of the day. Manglam joins us to run us through a quick analysis on those numbers. Manglam. Well, it's a decent set of numbers that have come in from Campus Active, where and after a lot of underperformance, the stock has finally managed to cross its IPO price. Remember, at record levels, the stock was closer to six hundred uh, rupees as well per share. So, you know, this underperformance is now coming out for Campus, and that's because there are signs of some recovery. The revenue for the company in the fourth quarter grew by about four and a half percent, but that led to a higher growth in the EBITDA, and as a result of which, the margins came in around that seventeen point six percent mark, which is a one thirty basis points improvement. movement the net profit also as a result of which grew over 40% and you know the internals looked pretty strong as well where the management said the second half of the year actually did well because of their renewed focus on uh, the trade and at the same time their average selling price also was more or less flattish while the company managed to repay debt worth over 150 crores become net debt free and at the same time uh, you know reduce their working capital days from a little over 100 to a little less than 80 as well so all those factors working well for campus activewear in fact we got a note coming in from kotak as well this morning where they have an ad rating with a target price of 285 on the stock saying that there was a good beat on profitability and uh, they believe that you know the multi brand outlet channel for the company grew at around 7.5% which was higher than the overall 4% volume growth that the company posted and add to that they had a word with the management who guides for near double digit growth going forward if the macros are favorable with margins in that 17 to 19% band so all these factors working along with the earlier underperformance of the stock and that results in a big spike in the shares of campus activewear today pretty active is campus active wear 16% higher and this surge has not only taken the stock past its ipo price in the terms of the intraday high which is 296 the ipo price was 292 it's also turned positive for 2024 courtesy this surge now 15 and a half percent almost 16 percent higher is campus active wear at 290 but with that it's a wrap on this edition of mid cap radar from nigel me and the team that put this show together thank you so much for watching your stocks takes the action forward <laughs>